scientists have created living skin for covering robots. Look out, Star Trek. Here we come with data. That in a report at Study Finds, is it a human or a robot? It may sound like a question from a sci-fi movie, but scientists in Japan have developed a way of covering robots with living human cells. <laughs> uh, you know this is bad all the way around. I just want to say, whether it's Westworld or Star Trek or TV's The Bionic Man. <laughs> just a throwback for you older folks there. Robots that look human are going to cause nothing but problems. A team from the University of Tokyo are bringing the spawn of Satan. I mean, androids one more step closer to reality by crafting actual skin for their frames. The method not only gives the robotic finger seen here a skin-like texture, but also water repellent and self-healing functions. Oh, great. <laughs> but do they dry up like a pop blister after a day? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Let's see what the study found, shall we? Looking like a real human is one of the top goals for designers of humanoid robots, especially those which interact with humans in healthcare and service industries. Professor Shoji Taguchi believes a human-like appearance can improve the efficiency on communication between robots and people and also improve their likability among customers. <laughs> Good luck with that. We still can't get the speaker at the drive up to work right, can we? <laughs> really? <laughs> Previous attempts at creating living skin to cover robots have only had limited success. Part of the problem has been getting it to conform to the dynamic shapes of the human body, which have uneven surfaces. To craft this new skin, the Tokyo team dipped the robotic finger in a solution of collagen and human dermal fibroblasts. These are the two main components that make up human skin connective tissue. That just sounds gross. Researchers established a tissue molding method to directly mold skin tissue around the robot. During the experiment, the skin shrank and tightly conformed to frame the finger. That is pretty cool. Professor Takuchi notes that the robot's skin has enough strength and elasticity to survive specific movements, such as curling or stretching the finger. The outermost layer was thick enough for researchers to pinch it with the tweezers. It was also capable of repelling water, providing various advantages in performing specific tasks. When something damages the skin, researchers say the skin can even self-heal, just like humans, with the help of a collagen bandage that gradually morphs into the skin and withstands repeated joint movements. <laughs> yes, I always put a collagen bandage on my skin that morphs. <laughs> Come on, it's not exactly like humans. But it is cool. I get it. I'm not being cynical. Well, I am, but you know. I hope there's an off switch, though. I just want to say that I have no problem giving a robot the finger. <laughs> oh, but I digress. However, study authors note the skin is much weaker than natural skin and can't survive long without constant nutrients, supplements, and waste removal. Ha! And there it is, a dried up blister. <laughs> but really, they are close, and they're talking about adding sensory neurons, hair follicles, nails, and sweat glands. <laughs> We're on the edge here, folks. I'm not going to go the whole robot overlord thing again here, but you say it. <laughs> you can check out more info on this and other studies by clicking the link in the description below and heading over to studyfinds.com.